You are listening to the Anxiety Podcast, where we support you to overcome anxiety and reduce stress. We will get vulnerable and it will be real. Here's your host, Tim J.P. Collins. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Anxiety Variety. Uh, this week we're talking about technology, so there is some irony because you are consuming this via technology, um, but it's something that's been coming up more in conversations with people and came up in an interview I did yesterday, so I just wanted to dive into it in a bit more detail, and that's really what Anxiety Variety is for, is to talk about just things that are, are coming up in conversations and I think would be beneficial to more people. Before I get to that, um, if you haven't checked out the website yet, you can go to anxietypodcast.com and on there you can get the free ebook, you can look at the webinar and more. There's lots in there. Um, also, for these ones where I've been recording the anxiety varieties for the last three or four, you can um, find them when you go to the podcast page, you'll see that the videos are in there. So that if you're looking at an anxiety variety, I'm not doing it for interviews at the moment. Um, you can watch the video at the same time. Um, also, due to microphone situations and syncing of audio, the, the the microphone that's used for the video is through my iPhone, so it's not as great as this one uh, that I'm talking on right now. So if you're just into pure audio, listen to the regular podcast. If you want to uh, see my smiley face, then you can watch the video, but the audio is slightly different. Anyway, enough said. But... It is topical because today we are talking about technology and the fact that I'm seeing more and more progressively over time people's um, addiction to technology or reliance on technology um, increasing. As I said, there's some irony in this because you're, you found me probably through the internet or through iTunes. So technology has a place, there's no doubt, it's important. Um, but it, for a lot of people I'm speaking to, even coaching clients is becoming all consuming. Like they can't get off of it for periods of the day. And they wait, the first thing they do when they wake up in the morning is roll over and check Facebook and a variety of other social medias to see what's going on. And it's causing them more anxiety and more stress, which is obviously the opposite of what this is all about. Um, so I just wanted to talk through some of those points today, just my observations and things that I've seen, and I've been guilty of some of these things as well, but you consciously have to start making a choice and you have to start making a difference. And yesterday I did a, an interview with a lady called Irene Lyons, which is going to be coming up in a few weeks time. Um, but one of the first things we talked about there was that as humans, we crave nature, really. We crave to get back to our, our basic surroundings um, and that's kind of like the opposite of technology. So when you step outside and go for a walk or when you're out in nature, whether it's at the beach or in the park, wherever it is, and you think to yourself, oh, this feels really good. Well, there's a reason for that. That's kind of where you're supposed to be. Um, we weren't supposed to be in, in all of these structures and or boxes, as Irene says. Um, so that natural environment is fabulous. The natural environment is also often disturbed by the fact that we are carrying our phones with us and either looking at Facebook as we walk down the road or listening to music or texting people or whatever it happens to be. The only exception to all this is if you're listening to the Anxiety Podcast, please continue. <laughs> Otherwise, you're not going to get the message. Um, but no, seriously, there's, there's often times, and I've been implementing this more and more myself, where just leave the phone at home. Don't take it with you. Don't take it out at all. Um, if you've got safety concerns, then obviously take your phone. I don't want you to be unsafe, but I think safety concerns are a bit overplayed. I think people are like, well, if there's an emergency, I'm going to need my phone. Well, what, what happened for all the years before cell phones were that prevalent, you know? People still were all right. Um, so if it is nighttime and you're walking down a dark alley, obviously take your phone with you. But if you're just going to the park at lunchtime or you're taking a break from work at lunchtime or you're going to play soccer in the park with your kids like I did yesterday, don't take your phone. I said to my wife yesterday, I'm going to pick the kids up from school. We're going to play soccer, football, and uh, I'm not taking my phone, just leaving it here. 
Um, and I'll get onto why I did that a bit later on. It, it, I could have obviously turned it off and taken it with me, right? Um, would have had a similar result. Um, but actually not physically taking it with me was going another step in that direction. And the reason, that, the reason this means so much to me is because when I was in the corporate world, when I was uh, beholden to my phone even more because my boss would try and get hold of me or customers would try and get hold of me, that was one of my major causes of anxiety um, because I knew that the, and I think I had a BlackBerry back in the day at the time, but the the alert sound that my phone ma- m- made would shoot off adrenaline into my body. I'd hear that alert and I'd be like, oh no, that means I'm going to have to go on. I got a meeting or I got to phone somebody or I got something to do, right? So that that would start the the anxious response in me. It would fire up some adrenaline and then I'd react to the adrenaline. And so the circle would start in terms of uh, me not feeling great. Um, and that just perpetuated over and over and over again. Um, and it was diff- difficult because, you know, people need to get hold of you when you're at work. Um, but again, we take that we take that too far ourselves. And um, one of the other things I talked about on the interview yesterday, which is coming in the future, slightly confusing, um, is that, you know, this technology is very new for us. And we're only we haven't even seen the extent of what it is going to do for us at this point. So we do need to be cognizant of the fact that we need to take breaks and we need to whether it get back in nature, if that sounds too tree huggy for you, just need to take breaks and detach and not be connected to it for a while. And because technology is so damn good and because so people, people are so clever at inventing apps that take your heart rate and apps that you meditate with and apps that you sleep with and apps that you eat with and apps that you drink with, it's like you need this thing all the time. But what you actually need is just to not have it for a while. Um, and then there's the, there's the kind of obviously the FOMO, the fear of missing out, right? Where you think, well, if I'm not on Facebook and I don't check my updates, then somebody might tag me or mention me or something might happen. Um, the reality is, is that doesn't just doesn't happen that much. And with my business experience and experience in pe- working with people, I can tell you one thing, and that remains true to this day, is uh, people who respond the quickest are respected the, the least, People who respond the quickest are respected the least. So if you're, somebody sends you an email and you're like, oh, quick, respond to this, right back, bang. You might think that you're being super responsive and maybe in some jobs you are if you're in customer service or something. But generally speaking, for most people, the quickest ones to respond are the people who aren't working on important stuff or aren't taking care of themselves or aren't spending time with their family. If you have the ability to respond immediately, it means you were kind of doing nothing else at the time, which means that you just weren't that busy or weren't that engaged in anything in your life. So if you're trying to come across as being really busy, but you're responding to messages instantly, then you're sending the wrong message. Um, And think about this for yourself, anybody you've ever corresponded to, and they've taken, you know, by the end of the business day to get back to you, you'll have a lot more respect for them, whether you, whether you know it or not, than somebody who responds in five minutes and the fact is, is because, you know, smart people who are making changes, whether it be in relationships or their family or business are the ones where they're not looking at this the whole time and they are doing other things and then they'll switch on their email periodically. Oh, there's a message from Tim. Hi, Tim. Thanks for your message, etc. Get back to him. Right. But the instant response. And, and if you think about it, the same thing is true in relationships, which is instant responses via text message normally mean that uh, you have no life and uh, you're not busy enough. Um, That often obviously isn't the case, but that's how it's perceived. So just I'm saying that because I want you to realize that with the FOMO thing, fear of missing out, if you do turn off your phone for periods of time and are uncontactable, it's going to make you more desirable, not less desirable, right? Whether that be business, pleasure, whatever it happens to be, People are going to think, well, you know, this guy's got something going on. And uh, when he gets back to me, they're going to be more engaged and, and more, uh, you know, listening to the response and, and wanting to talk to you. The next thing, and by the way, I decided for this episode at the end, I'm going to summarize some, some uh, takeaways, things for you to try out. Um, 
The next thing is to leave, leave the phone out of your bedroom. Don't use your cell phone for your alarm clock. Um, all those things are kind of important, uh, essentially so that you can get a good night's sleep and not feel like I used to, where I would wake up at two in the morning to go to the washroom and I would check my email and then I'd get a terrible email about a deal I was working on and be like, oh no, and then I wouldn't be able to sleep again. Um, and this is something which is massively prevalent. So my advice is, is to get a different, get an old school alarm clock. They still sell them or set one another way. I know people say, well, I put my phone on airplane mode and then I set my alarm and that's fine, but it's easy to turn airplane mode off and check your email again. Um, actually the, the conscious, the conscious thing of placing your phone in your office, in the kitchen, in the living room, somewhere else where it's not reachable by your arm when you're laying in bed is going to make a big difference. So have a go at that. The next thing is is a slightly bigger concept, but it's one which has been coming up in conversations lately. And that is when you talk, when I talk to people about what is the time in their life when they feel best, happiest, most engaged in the world. For many people, that's when they travel. Um, it's when it's summer holidays or when they travel around the world or they have aspirations to travel more. Um, and part of that is, is because it allows us to have this kind of liberation or freedom. And I was speaking to somebody the other day who traveled all summer. Um, and they were kind of saying the nice thing was they woke up every day. They had the ability to set their schedule. They had the ability to decide where they were going to go. There weren't any time constraints and they weren't connected to technology very much. Funny that. Um, so Technology is an anchor on us. Uh, it does kind of hold us in place. It means we are able to be reached. The telephone, forget the internet, but the telephone by definition is an interruption. Um, people are going to phone you and you weren't expecting a phone call, right? It's just going to, your phone's going to ring. You're like, oh, there it is. And you've stopped what you're doing and you've picked the phone up. At least now with cell phones, we have the ability to switch that off, right? And you can focus on whatever the task is at hand. So think about that for you. And I would encourage you to create little moments of liberation and freedom in your day by consciously turning off that phone, leaving it behind and taking your walk or going out and doing some exercise or sitting in the quiet for a few minutes and just not be contactable, just be free. Um, and I know this sounds very basic, but uh, I'm doing it on a regular basis and it does make a difference. You can absolutely do this. A couple of, a couple of other uh, things to think about. Um, you know, from a social media point of view as well, I just want to point out and, and something I've talked about before is that social media is a highlight reel typically or, or a news feed in some respects. So you're either going to get very good, unrealistic view of the world i.e. look how amazing everybody looks and everybody's doing so well, or you're going to hear about, you know, bad things happening in the world and things that are going to upset you or, or, you know, trigger stressful feelings in you or anxious feelings in you. So just be careful about what state of mind you want to be in when you're consuming social media. I assume that most people do and most people will continue to, but just, um, you know, decide whether you want that in your life. Would you watch the news before you go to bed? I, I wouldn't. I mean, I don't consume the news via on TV or newspapers at all. And I still manage to hear about things, bad things that happen in the world because it ends up showing up in, in other places. Um, so just one thing to point out, and it may be obvious for some people, but social media is typically a highlight reel. And if you're in a place where you're not feeling good about yourself and you're going on social media to feel better, then that might not work out for you as planned. Um, while we're on uh, the internet side of things, obviously we've I've talked a bit in the past about good old Dr. Google and that you may go searching for things and 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 lead down rabbit holes which may make you think that you know the the headache you've got means that you know you're you have moments to live and it's very extreme. So there's just there's just so many things that can end up in a bad place when you start googling stuff um so my my kind of takeaway on that one and it doesn't have to be health related things it could be you know what was the who was the president of the united states during the second world war i mean it could be anything that you're sat around the kitchen table trying to figure out so here's my um 
here's my takeaway for you on that one. Write it down. So if your phone switched off and then all of a sudden you somebody says Google it, don't write it down and just leave it. And if you can't think of the answer to the question, then maybe the next day when you're at your computer for work or next time you switch your phone on, you can have a look at the list of things you've written down and see if they are still relevant and still uh, inquiring minds still want to know, in which case you can look it up at that point. But delaying that gratification is going to train you to not want to be attached to the phone as much. It'll probably actually make you smarter because you'll actually have to think about something versus just looking it up. Um, and the last thing I wanted to say was the the thing which just you just see all the time now, which is at concerts or sports events or these things where you, people are filming everything. Um, another fantastic reason to leave your phone in the car um, so you don't spill beer on it, but no, leave your phone in the car so you don't have to film the event you're at because you're there to experience it. And, you know, as somebody said recently, in a thousand years, nobody will remember any of this. So recording it for the ability to then show people later on what a great time you had, um, it's just unnecessary. Just enjoy the music, enjoy the game, um, fully experience it with the people, with the community, right? Somebody else will be recording it anyway, and it'll be up on YouTube. So if you really want to show somebody else what was going on, then you can just point them to that one. Um, so I'm going to finish off with, I've kind of like uh, distilled these down into seven tips. So seven tips for uh, having a bit less technology, less technology, more life, less anxiety, more life, and just being a bit more engaged in the world. So the first one is to uh, practice switching off your phone at random times during the day. Putting on airplane mode might be enough for you. I suggest you actually power it down because it takes longer to come on and therefore instant gratification isn't as as good if you have to do that. Um, So practice switching it off. Maybe at lunchtime you switch it off for an hour. Um, Maybe in the middle of the afternoon you switch it off for an hour. Obviously, this depends on what your vo- you know, what your job is and whether people need to be in touch with you for that. But if not, lots of chances to practice. Um, number two is phone don't text. So, so much of our conversations these days are through email or text messages. Um, I would just encourage you to, when you get a text from somebody and it's more than a one-word answer, phone them back. People will be like, oh, this is strange. Somebody's actually talking to me. But you know, just get on the phone and continue having a real life conversation. You'll get the result quicker. You'll be able to hear the sarcasm or the tonality of their voice or the anger or the seriousness or whatever it is without having to use emoticons. You can actually have a a real conversation. So phone, don't text. Um, number three is turn off all notifications. Um, again, unless you're, unless you work on a, a help desk for an urgent, some kind of urgent, uh, organization then being notified every time you get a tweet instagram linkedin message text every time angry birds updates um you don't need it and if you are predisposed to being stressed or anxious all of those notifications are firing up your brain they're bursting a little bit of adrenaline in and they're going to make you more anxious so turn them all off you can in you know whether you have an android an iphone or whatever else um, you can go and turn all those notifications off um, and you know, that would be a, a solid start to, to not reacting all the time. Um, so imagine the, the distraction level of doing something or having a conversation and then the whole time your brain's kind of checking out something else. No wonder that makes people anxious. Um, leave the phone out of the bedroom. I talked about get a separate alarm clock, leave it out of the bedroom and you're not checking Facebook before you go to bed. You're not seeing some horrific news before you go to bed and you're not you know, being attached from that point of view. Um, number five, no phones at the dinner table. Um, and I think this is one for our kids as well. I've in the past been guilty of giving the kids the phone, you know, watch a film or do something, but they're missing out on critical interaction skills, which they're learning from us as their parents. Um, so no phones at the dinner table, have conversation, talk about the food, talk about the weather, talk about school, whatever you want. But that habit, if we continue to perpetuate mobile phones or iPads or whatever it is at the dinner table, um, it's, it's going to be hard to come back from. Um, and if you're in a restaurant, you know, one of the things you can do if the child says, give me your iPhone because we're in the restaurant, just leave your phone in the car and say the phone's in the car. I don't even have it. 
Again, do you really need to have it on you all the time? Probably not. Um, number six, switch off your phone when you're driving. Obviously, we would constantly talk to about um, safe driving and all the rest of it. Um, so just switch it off. Put it on the back seat um, and, and just don't have it accessible to you. Um, and number seven is um, kind of an overarching one is get used to leaving your phone behind in general when it's safe to do so. Don't use safety as an excuse. So if you can not have your phone attached to you for periods of time, then just leave it behind. Don't carry it with you and have some time on your own, right? Um, and you'll start to feel freer the more of this stuff you do. Um, so anyway, hopefully that's been useful to you. It's been something which has just been coming up for me and something I've been implementing more in my life and therefore, and because I've been seeing the benefits of it, I just want to share it with you. Um, so that's all I have for this week. Uh, final things, if you're interested in talking to me or have questions, then you can contact me through the website, anxietypodcast.com. Um, if you haven't left yet left us a review and you would be kind enough to do so, the link to do the reviews is in the show notes and it's also on the page on the website, the podcast page. So there you have it. And remember, until next time, less anxiety, more life. Thank you for listening to the Anxiety Podcast. For more information, go to theanxietypodcast.com.